Welcome, and congratulations on being admitted to the 2015 incoming class for UIS and the graduation class of 2017. We're pretty excited to have you. And today, we're going to tell you all the secrets, the ins and outs, and what to do now to be successful once you get here in the fall. My name is Aaron Betcher, and I'm one of the admissions counselors. I've been at the University of Illinois Springfield now since 2003, so a couple years now. So feel free to ask any questions you want as we go through, and I'm really looking forward to hopefully giving you those hints and tricks. In terms of the, the things we're going to cover today, Number one, and probably first on your mind, is orientation. That's coming up quick, and we want to make sure that you're feeling comfortable. We're going to go through that. We're going to talk about housing. We're going to talk about what's going on with that and a lot of other little things that are going to come up throughout the year so that you're ready, not only for orientation this summer, but also when we get you here in the fall so you can be successful. And the great news is today I've got one of our orientation leaders here to go through some orientation with you. All right, how's it going today? RJ, it's great to have you here. Now, RJ, what year of school are you? I'm going to be a sophomore. Sophomore, awesome. Where are you from, RJ? I'm from Carthage, Illinois. All right, so you just went through this process that a lot of these students are going to go through here in just a couple days. What were you feeling at this point last year? Um, I think I was pretty nervous at this point, and I'm definitely nervous about coming to a new area, meeting new people. I know how that works. I mean, when I was going to college, which was a long, long time ago, one of the things that, that I did in orientation, I realized that there's not really those cliques, there's not those groups anymore like you're used to in high school. And uh, lucky for me, there was a really cute girl when I went to orientation. And so I decided at lunch, I'm going to sit next to her. Guess what? We attended up uh, being best friends for all four years of college. And I think that's a great thing with orientation. Everybody's going to meet each other. Is that something that you saw? Yeah, definitely. Um, all the events that they had going on during it, and everyone, everybody else clicks or anything going on, everyone mm -hmm. just wanting to get to know each other, because it's a new experience for everyone, so they all came in together. Yeah, what, what were some of the, some of the events that you're, that you're talking about? Um, well, for example, like, um, the first night, everyone would hang out in the Stars Lounge and everyone just kind of, like, I didn't really know anybody, so I just walked up to a pool table where people were playing, and I just kind of got to know them and started playing pool with them, or ping pong, or whatever else they had going on in the Stars Lounge. Yeah. And, and I mean, for, for some tips, I mean, are there some things that, that uh, these students should know coming in down to orientation, now that you've been through it, and now that you're on the orientation staff? I mean, I guess just definitely be open to anything, um, to meeting new people, and don't be nervous about anything, um, especially getting to know new people, because everyone's coming in with the same experiences as you, mm -hmm. so um, basically just getting to know people. And the last question I've got from you, RJ, is, is was there anything that, that maybe you brought to orientation that, that you decided you didn't need, or was there something that you didn't bring that you wish you would have brought? Uh, well, I guess one of the cool things about uh, the rooms is that we do have like our home, our own central air conditioning and heating and everything. So, oh, okay. yes, <laughs> I thought that it was pretty awesome, but so I guess bring extra blankets if that's that. Yeah, hey, I don't, I don't blame you on that. And, and I know, too, just so all students know, we're going to go through this here in just a second. But immunization, records, health insurance stuff, you know, your toilet trees, your, your small things like that. Hey, if you got your favorite pillow, make sure you bring one of those as well. But uh, we're going to provide the room for you with uh, the witness and everything that you're going to need that way. But we have some of your comforts from home, so make sure that you bring those with you if that's something that's important for you. But that's what I would tell these students to do. Definitely come up, say hi to them, you know, learn the tricks while he's here. And I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about this. Yeah. And now what we do for the students is we've got a special guest. Fernando Pons, the Director of Admissions, is here for me today to talk to you a little bit about his experience and some of his tips for you as well while you come to school at UIS. Thanks, sir. It's great to be with you. And uh, let me, on behalf of the administration, the faculty and staff, congratulate you on your admission to the University of Illinois Springfield. You know, admission to UIS is competitive. We're a selective university. So we have uh, done something rather commendable. You have been accepted to, I think, an excellent university with outstanding academics, uh, with really, really good faculty, and also with some unique opportunities uh, that you can participate in. And you'll hear about those a little later on today. Um, we feel very confident that you will be receiving an education that's going to be top flight. Um, you're going to be 
be uh, finding your UIS experience to be, I think, outstanding, practical, high quality, and will prepare you well for your future in whatever field you decide to go into. So once again, congratulations and welcome to the UIS family. Now, there are a few tips that I'd like to give you in order to be ready for this fall. Number one, I'd like you to really get to know the faculty. The faculty, the faculty are really concerned about your success. In fact, their number one priority is making sure that you're a successful student. So take the initiative, introduce yourselves to them, and, uh, and really get to know them. Also, make sure that you meet with your academic advisor regularly. The advisors are the folks that are going to help you in planning out your schedule, registering for your classes, and make sure that you're on track to earning your degree. Use all the resources that are available to you here. The resources that we have are really designed to help you be the best possible student you can be. Also, get involved in campus life. We have lots of student organizations that you can, that you can join, uh, many different types of activities, activities that you can participate in. And you know what? Getting involved in campus life really makes you a much more successful student. Also, stay on top of your studies. The reason you're here is to earn your degree and to go on in your profession. So make sure that you're keeping on top of your homework, you're doing all of the uh, requirements that uh, your faculty require of you, and that you really are being uh, as successful as you can be. We certainly do want you to enjoy your UIS experience, to make new friends, and to enjoy your total college experience here. Now, the other thing that I really want to stress is the importance of signing up for orientation if you haven't yet done so. In fact, I really want you to sign up for orientation. And we're going to do this. I'd like for you to go ahead and sign in. Um, let us know who you are. I'd really like to know who's uh, tuned in uh, with us today. I'd like to know who you are, your name, what school you're coming from, your location, and also what you're interested in studying. But also, let us know what orientation date you've chosen. And perhaps we can have some other folks here uh, who are attending the same orientation uh, meet you on that day. And in fact, first two people who contact us with their names, you're going to get a UIS t-shirt from us. Now we're going to give you a little bit of time to sign in and provide us that information. So during, during uh, the next few minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and roll a short video. So let's roll the video. Think about where you want to go in life. Somewhere inspired. Somewhere you can make your mark. It's a powerful vision. Now, think about what it will take to turn that vision into reality. The kind of place that specializes in opportunity. Where people go not just to learn how to lead, but to explore why it's so important in the first place. That place is the University of Illinois Springfield. Where leadership is lived. It's more than a logo or a slogan. It's a promise, a fundamental truth. The UIS brand part of the world-class University of Illinois and built upon four core attributes that make us who we are. Teaching focused, opportunity rich and collaborative. A right-sized supportive community with a tradition of educating public servants and leaders. Leadership Live. It's an affirmation of who we are and what we've always been. A place where professors are passionate about teaching and lessons of leadership are woven into the curriculum where connecting to the community is a given. And through that, a passion for creating a better world takes root. Where opportunities to add knowledge and shape the campus culture extend beyond the faculty and empower students who want their own voices heard. Leadership lived. An affirmation and an aspiration. It's our answer to the question, what is UIS? Thank you very much, Fernando, and that was 
that was some great advice, and I hope the students really take that to heart. Uh, going on that, too, we do have Claire, one of our admissions counselors, on the chat page right now. So if you do have questions that come up throughout the presentation, feel free to be talking to her. That's also a great place to meet some of the other students. In addition, we, uh, at the end, we'll do some questions and answers. So if you've got questions about campus, post them now, and we'll get to those here in just a few minutes. But I know one of the biggest worries that many of you are going to have is housing. I know when I was a freshman, you know, I was really nervous about leaving home for the first time and seeing what some of those things are going to be. And, and uh, what I want to do next is, is bring in a student. Her name is Brooke. She was a freshman here last year. And she went through this whole process of not knowing the roommate, finding out what's going on, going through those kind of things. And so I think she really has some great experiences that, that hopefully you're going to be able to learn a lot from. Uh, Brooke, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Hi. Now, Brooke, where, where are you from? I'm from Mm -hmm. Nice. And, and I mean, at this point, you were probably anxious, trying to find out what's going on, roommates, everything like that. I mean, I mean, kind of where were you at at this time? I was really nervous about like who I was going to room with, what room I was going to be put in, who was, I was going to be living around, like who my seatmates were going to be, and mm -hmm. just how people was going to work. It, I mean, it's a crazy time, right? It I mean. Is very crazy. You're, you're leaving the house, it, it, it's something that you can be comfortable with. A lot, of, a lot of students are leaving their parents and, and those kind of things and, and going off to college and, and going on your own and making that transition. Uh, you know, were there a few things that, that worried you most about your roommate or was there anything that, that you know, you really hoped that both of you were on the same page with? Yeah, well, one thing was communication. Was it, was, I was really nervous about that. I didn't know how well we were going to communicate. Mm -hmm. I mean, we may or may not have had two different living styles. Like, uh, how to have our room would be set up, or how to like, clean our yeah. just the different yeah, the different dynamics yeah. like that, yeah. I mean, one thing that, that you bring up, though, uh, I think our housing department does a great job with, and that is uh, what you were talking about, the dynamics, cleanliness, what time everybody's going to bed. And, and for me, I think those are two of the most important things that are on the housing application. What time do you really go to bed? Guess what? There's not a right or wrong answer. You're 100% right, no matter what you put down. But we want to get you right with your roommate, so that one of you isn't waking up at 6 in the morning and the other one wants to sleep till noon. Guess what? Both of them can still graduate college. But that's sometimes where those roommate disputes come up, or like you mentioned, how clean you are. Uh, believe it or not, and I was really messing back in the day. All right? And so if I would have had a clean roommate that wanted everything, you know, me all the time, I, that would have been a struggle for me. And so, you know, be honest in those answers. That way we can hopefully match you up. And I think, were, were you able to find a good roommate? I actually knew my roommate. We were friends in high school. Oh, yes. Which was, this is another thing. Like, choosing your roommate is a difficult mm -hmm. thing to do. But, like, just be smart about it. Like, it'll be coming in with somebody that you know. It can be a little rocky at first. Like, mm -hmm. we had some issues the first semester. But yeah. you get used to living with somebody. Just be on really good terms with your roommate. It's mm -hmm. about... So what did you like best about going on? I it was being so close to everybody. Like mm -hmm. I, I lived with one of my friends, one of my best friends lived the next door down. So oh, just gosh. being able to like just go down the hall and like hang out with people. Mm -hmm. And like that's what I miss when I have home for like breaks and stuff. Like I couldn't just walk down and see my friends. Mm -hmm. And, and bro, that's a great point. I know a lot of freshmen come in and, they, and they're worried about being homesick and they've got that feeling. And you find out, that, as Brooke explains, later in the year, you tend not to want to go home during the break. So, ah, it's Thanksgiving break. We've got to go home for a week and you want to stay with those friends. And, and uh, I think you bring up a great point. I mean, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is what to bring up. You know, a lot of these students now are, are trying to get everything organized and, and trying to get everything together. What are things that you wish you would have brought, things that you brought that maybe you wish you didn't? I mean, those kind of things. Just be smart. Like, you don't want to bring too much because then you have to haul it all up to where your room is. And, <laughs> like, the one big thing that I found that I brought way too much of is clothes. Like, you have your closet and you have your dresser, but mm -hmm. sometimes you just want a lot of places to put things, but definitely like bring storage boxes so you can put like your extra like cleaning supplies and all that stuff in there. So and like raise your bed high so you can stick the, all that under there. Yeah. And the one like what I brought to another thing that I brought too much of was cleaning supplies. But like the bathroom mm -hmm. and whatnot. The one the big 
of course, like I said earlier, the communication. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you'll know who your roommate is on the housing assignments and who your students are. So just communicate with them, and like you can divide up all of the cleaning supplies for the bathroom and like what you're gonna bring, like shower sure. curtains and all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. Like we would rotate toilet paper, so mm -hmm. we'd all like we each have our own uh, like need for a month for toilet paper. So oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing that I want to talk to you too about, and you mentioned uh, roommate assignments. Housing will be assigning those roommates around July 21st. Now, a lot of you are probably asking, why is that so late? Some of my friends going to these other schools, they've already gotten uh, roommates. The reason is, is we want you to be able to come to orientation and possibly find that roommate. And we want to be able to make that adjustment instead of maybe getting broke assigned a roommate and then having to switch it after you've gotten to know them. So we hope that when we assign these roommates that everybody's kind of on the same page. And like I said, those should come out around uh, July 21st. Move-in date will be August 20th. And we will give you a uh, time to move in. Last year, uh, it started at 9 o'clock and it was typically last names A through H. And then it just kind of moved later throughout the day. So we really look forward to seeing everybody move in. And again, August 20th is the move-in date for freshmen. That is a Wednesday. So thank you so much. And people, it's great to have you. Thank you. Now, in terms of, of the campus and in terms of different things that, that I really suggest too with housing is come here, have a great time, look to meet some other kids, and really get active. I think, I think you'll really enjoy what you see once you're able to, to get on campus and once you're able to experience some of those kind of things here at EYS. In terms of, in terms of the, uh, the campus and the campus life and some of those things, we'll get into that here in just a second. Now, this slide right here with financial aid is very, very important. It's something that I really want to cover. I know it's boring money, nobody likes that, but I want to make sure that you guys totally understand everything that's going to come up. Number one, financial aid sends you an award letter and it says make these choices within three weeks. That's something that we have to put there, but you don't have to make your choices. You're not going to lose any money, any loan money, any scholarships right now by not selecting it that way. Financial aid wants you to come see them before you leave at orientation. I suggest it's the last thing that you and your family does before they go home. Freshmen, it is not scheduled as part of your orientation to have that meeting. Your parents will go down there, but with you and them, it won't be. So before you leave, go down, talk to them, because here's the biggest advantage. They're gonna go through everything with you. They're gonna see, do you have any outside scholarships that we didn't know about yet? And here's what their suggestions are for loan amounts to take. We don't want you to spend extra money to attend UIS. We're known as one of the best values in the country, and we do that in a way that, that we are able to focus on you as an individual and make sure that you're getting the best scholarships and package possible. And we do that with that help from financial aid, but if you don't take the time to meet with them at orientation, you might lose out on some stuff. So definitely take that time. Also with financial aid, jobs. I know some of you might want a job when you're a freshman. July 1st is the beginning date that you can apply for a job on campus. That's only if you've attended one of the first orientations. Now, I know some of you are signed up for one of the July orientation dates and you're saying, oh no, don't worry. All right, they won't go through any of that stuff until much later in the year, but you have to register for classes first. That will take place at orientation. So once you're registered, you can go on, you can apply for jobs, they'll, they'll actually have a uh, section for that during your uh, orientation. So you'll have time to learn a little bit more about that. So don't freak out if you've got work study, the water to you, and how do I apply for these jobs. Finally, the first week on campus while you're here, we have a job fair. Every single office on campus that hires will have representatives there. You're going to be able to talk one-on-one -on -one with them. It's a great chance to find the right place for you on campus. So don't worry too much about it, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. The last thing with financial aid, payment plans. Okay, and I know payment doesn't sound very exciting, but I want to go through some of that stuff. First, payment is not due for your first semester until Sunday, September 28th. That's over a month from the start of school. So you've got plenty of time to get your loans, your outside scholarships, the payment together. Now, if your family is interested in a payment plan, you can do that as well. But for the 12-month payment plan, where you're paying the same price for 12 months, 
That sign up is June 27th, so that's coming up real quick. But we have payment plans from three months to 12 months, so there's all different things that we can do to make sure that, that we're helping you out and helping your family out. Now, in terms of uh, <clears throat> student insurance, that's another very important thing on campus. Why? Because every single student that goes to the University of Illinois Springfield is given health insurance. Now, some of you, this health insurance would be a better plan than what you currently have. For some of you, though, your parents do have insurance on you already. If you do not bring your health insurance card with you to orientation, you might lose out on $820. All right? We want you to save that money. So make sure you bring that health insurance card. We have tremendous facilities here, whether it's on campus with our uh, medical center on campus, whether it's with two uh, state-of-the-art hospitals here in town and a lot of different doctor's offices for anything that you need. What our student insurance does and what uh, you know our medical facility does on campus is try to work with you to find out what your insurance covers so we're making sure that your family and you are best taken care of if something ever comes up while you're on campus with us. But let's get back to the fun stuff. What is there to do on campus? And guess what? I have probably the number one person you want to know on campus. And believe it or not, she's only going to be a sophomore. Let me introduce you to her. Her name's Kyla. Hi. Kyla, it's great to meet you. Actually, see you again. I, I, have, to, I have to, you know, give a, give a uh, uh, little note. I, I recruited her, so, uh, you know, she, she, she was forced on here. But it's all right. She's really active, and I want to make sure that you guys hear from her. And, uh, you know, Kyla, where are you from? Again? I am from Rockford, Illinois. It's yeah. three hours north. So, you know, coming three hours south, you were probably worried a little bit about what is there to do. Yeah. Um, I didn't know too much about the Springfield area. I mean, of course, it's our state's capital. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to know exactly what was there to do on campus. So I got involved in, um, I got involved in our Student Activities Committee, oh, which hosts nice. a lot of events um, on campus, such as um, educational events. We have um, Welcome Week that starts off right as you get on campus. Um, we have a concert. There's a hypnotist. There's comedians. Tons of stuff, and I actually help plan it, so it's a lot of fun. Nice. What? Now, I think somebody told me that even as a freshman, they, they really had a great opportunity for you to help plan some of these events. So what was it? Yeah. Um, actually, in the process of helping plan events, we decide what do we want to bring to campus. Mm -hmm. um, there's a national convention called NACA, okay. and uh, I'm actually up there as a freshman, fully paid to Boston for um, an entire week, and it was really awesome. I got to see all these college acts. I saw. Um, People such, they were on um, Saturday Night Live and Girl Code and Guy Code. It was awesome. And think about that. As a freshman, that's how active you can get on campus at UIS. I mean, uh, I think that's one of the biggest advantages of Illinois Springfield is how easy it is to get involved. I mean, what are you involved in outside of the student activities? Um, on an orientation leader, um, I am a Summer Bridge peer mentor. Um, I have a job at the Student Organization Center, and I am part of the Necessary Steps program. Man, that, that'll keep you busy. Yeah. Now, I mean, in terms of, of some of the events on campus, what were maybe one or two of your favorite events that happened last year? I hate people ask me that because there were so many. Um, at the end of this past year, we actually had an event called Wrecking Ball. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Miley Cyrus inspired. Yeah. And um, we brought in an inflatable wrecking ball, and we got the teams of four, and we just like pushed this wrecking ball around and pushed each other off, and it was. Nice. Cool. And of course, I just loved all of the comedians that we had. I loved to laugh and make people laugh. And so we brought in a comedian called Now Hall, and he was mm -hmm. absolutely hilarious. And we brought in a big crowd, and it was awesome. Nice. Now, I think there's one big week in April that I know everybody on this web webcast is going to be interested in. And what is that? The biggest week we possibly could ever have on this campus is um, Spring Fest. And what that is, is our version of um, Greek games. Um, Greek language is <clears throat> Excuse me. Greek language is just coming to our campus, so mm -hmm. um, we have this thing called Spring Fest, and it's a week long of different activities, and you get into your own teams, and you compete all week. And at the end of the week, there is a sports day, and you just compete in sports all day. And then at the end, there's a Spring Fest winner, mm -hmm. and you get bragging rights and a really cool T-shirt. And I, and I mean, I know a couple years ago they had upwards of 30, 35 teams. Mm -hmm. Each team has 12 to 16 people, so I mean, you're at a, at a smaller school like Illinois Springfield. That's a, that's a yeah. big group, and so I think it's a great way to meet other people on campus. And, and once the weather starts getting nice, get outside and, and have a lot of fun. Well, let me ask you this: You're coming up, uh, you know, in the fall. Is there one event that everybody needs to put on their calendars? Um, definitely look out for our um, 
Welcome Week concert. I can't exactly say what it is because it is not official yet, but it is this close to being official. And also in October, we have some pretty cool things coming out. But I can't say because it's top secret. Hey, hey, give them, give them a little, give them a little thing to look forward to. I like that. Well, everybody, that's Kylie, and she will be at orientation with you. Say hi. She's the right one to know. And thank you so much for spending a little time with us today. Yeah. Now, in terms of one other important thing for orientation, it's immunizations. Immunizations is a very, very important thing. Because like we touched on with student health insurance, we want to make sure that the university is going to be safe for you. So we require every student that comes to Illinois Springfield to submit an immunization record. Now, it's pretty easy. If you, if you contact your doctor physician, they can get that to you. And you can bring that with you to orientation. If you don't, which I highly encourage you to do, but if for some reason you don't, you have up until 10 days after school starts to bring that in. You want to have it done so that you're all set. But if for some reason it's not in, you can be charged a late fee. So I wanted to give you a quick heads up on how immunization stuff work on campus. Now, we have a tremendous opportunity for you. For everybody here today, I'm, I'm going to open up what I like to call a Facebook challenge to you. We have a Facebook page for admitted students. If you are not a member of it, you'll see my email here in a second. You can always click on my email or send me an email when we get done, and I'll send you the link for that so we can get you as part of the page. But here's the context. Whoever posts a comment that gets the most comments below it by June 18th, we will send you a prize pack courtesy of the University of Illinois Springfield. I think it could be a tremendous thing, and hey, I'll put in some really cool stuff in there for you that a lot of other students coming to UIS aren't going to have. All you got to do, get on our Facebook page. It's a tremendous place to meet other incoming students, see what they're talking about. And a lot of times, some of the questions that you might have have already been answered or talked about by a lot of these students. Plus, it's a great way, one, to meet future roommates when those come out. Because if everybody's on that page, it's really easy to figure out who your roommate is and get in touch with them. Two, it's a great way to talk about who's coming to orientations, what days they're coming. And so you already know some of the people before you get here. So I hope you take advantage of it. And like I said, uh, if you go on to my email once we get done, it'll be on in two slides. Or if you talk with Claire right now and just chatting away, uh, we'd be glad to get you that link. Now, in terms of everything, I would be happy to answer your questions. So let me check and, and let's see what questions that, that have come in. All right, I've got a, I've got a great question here. When roommates are announced, Will contact information be included so my roommate and I can let each other know what to bring and make sure that we don't bring doubles of appliances or, or other things? Great question. Here's the bad news. Because of privacy acts, we're not able to release that. But in terms of, of my experience, a lot of the students that I recruit send me an email and say, hey, if my roommate asks about me, release that information to me. So talk with your counselor, talk with your admissions counselor. A lot of times we have that contact info. A lot of times maybe your roommate has asked us to share that with you, and we would be happy to do that. But like I said earlier, that Facebook page is the number one place to do it because when they come out, you guys can probably get in contact before you can even send me an email. And so I think that would be number one. But uh, And the other thing that I saw last year on the Facebook page, a lot of students were like, hey, who knows blah, blah, blah from this town. And they were able to connect through the Facebook page that way as well. So great question, and hopefully that helps you out. I know we've got another one here. I know there's Wi-Fi around campus, but do the dorm rooms have regular Ethernet uh, ports? Great question. Yes. Hey, we know that you need those Ethernet ports for gaming. We know you need it for downloading some iTunes, for, for you know watching all your YouTube videos. Plus, some of you probably want to do homework in your dorm room. We're going to allow those Ethernet hookups. We actually have two Ethernet hookups per room, so you and your roommate can be connected that way. We're wireless. The complete campus is wireless. So if you want to work in the, in the uh, library, if you want to take your laptop to class, if you want to take your I, iPad to the gym, for some reason, you can be connected with wherever you go on campus. It's a tremendous tool and something that I really like about UIS. And one of the biggest advantages of our brand new dorms on campus is, is what we're able to bring to you technology-wise. I think we've got another question here. 
Will we be contacted on when to arrive for move-in day? That is a great question, and yes, you will. Typically, move-in starts at about 9 in the morning on, on the 20th. Now, they don't allow everybody to show up at 9 o'clock for a simple reason. You don't want to be sitting waiting for the elevator for 25 minutes to take your stuff upstairs. All right, we have tremendous help here, and typically there's about 30 to 40 students and, and staff here to help you carry everything up to your room. Typically, they'll send you move-in times with about a, a half-hour time period where you'll be able to arrive, they'll load everything, they'll get it up into your room, and that way you're able to check in without having to wait in lines. That will come out also for you on that July 21st area. So great question, great question. This is a great question. I would really like some explanations about dates for financial aid refunds when they'll be available. Can you decide how much to take and refund and leave some other things if you don't need to use the money and get it back in a second refund? That's a great question. Now, number one, financial aid at your orientation will be able to go through the refund process with you. We know that some of you students get extra money outside scholarships with financial aid, with the Pell Grant, and some of the scholarships that we offer you that actually cover more than the cost of tuition. That is kind of what the refund is meant by. And yes, our students do that. Now, number one, I would definitely encourage you to give us your bank account information of financial aid so they can directly deposit that refund to you. Otherwise, sometimes it takes two, three weeks to get that check to you. And I know if you're getting a refund, you want to be able to use that money for expenses that come up during the year. So make sure when you come to orientation, you talk to financial aid about the refund process. I mean, I know a little bit about it, but they're going to be the experts. If you've got questions right now, I would encourage you to call 217-206-6724. That's the financial aid office's phone number. Let me give that to you again. 217-206-6724. Six seven two four, and if for some reason you guys didn't get that, you can always type and, and ask Claire, or, and she'd be happy to get that number to you here real quick. Let's see, do we have? Oh, when will we find out if you want any scholarships? Tremendous question. Here's the bad news: could be any time. Now, here's why that process happens. The committees are, are meeting; they're, they're announcing those winners. But what happens is sometimes these winners decide not to take the scholarships. Maybe they went to a different school. So then we go through the wait list period. So sometimes you might find out about a scholarship now. Sometimes you might find out about a scholarship in August. Uh, you know, and, and so it always differs. That's why we don't kind of come out and say, hey, sorry, we didn't win a scholarship, because these processes take a lot of time. We give students two to three weeks to get back to us to let us know if they're going to be accepting the scholarship. So a lot of students right now are on the wait list, waiting to see if they're going to get scholarship. So we want to be there for you. We want to help you. A lot of times, and I, and I say this a lot, contact your admissions counselors. A lot of times they might have some insider information for you on some of that stuff as well. Do we have any more questions? Oh, here's, here's a great question, one that I forgot to cover. How much does a parking permit cost, and is it worth bringing your car to campus? Tremendous question. Here's the best news. Your parking pass costs less than what I have to pay for parking. Guess what? We don't get any different spots than you guys get. As a student, parking costs $60 for the year. I know many of you pay more than $60 just to park your car in high school. All right, so it is very affordable. It is right across the street from where you're going to be living. All right, a one-minute to two-minute walk is going to get you to your vehicle. Now, do I think it's an advantage to bring your vehicle? If you have the means to bring a vehicle to, to UIS, it might be an advantage to you. One of the big advantages of Illinois Springfield is we are one of the safest universities anywhere in the country. But that also means that we're just outside of the main part of Springfield, still within the city. So sometimes to get to places in town, it's nice to have a car. But since we allow freshmen to have vehicles, a lot of your roommates, a lot of the people that you're going to be living with have cars. So if you don't have one, you're going to be able to get around. We get, and if there's people from Chicago in here, about 50% of our freshman class from the Chicagoland area. So you can easily get back there. We have Amtrak, there's buses that come through. But if you want to bring your car, we do not have a parking problem. You will always have a parking spot. So it's definitely something you can do, but you don't have to bring one, but it is a choice. What is the average total for books per semester? An amazing question. Now, let's go through the, the positives and negatives. There are cheap ways to buy your books. You can go on some of these online sites and get books for very cheap. You can buy them or rent them at the bookstore. Sometimes the book's cheaper there, sometimes it's cheaper online. Now, typically I tell students to factor in a number between $500 and $600 a semester. 
Uh, certain majors, I was a business student as an undergrad, our books cost a little bit more. All right? In other majors, sometimes the books are a little bit less expensive. But a $600, uh, $1,200 for the year number for books will be safe. But a lot of you are going to do this. They're going to rent them. You're going to buy used books. It's a great savings. My sister-in-law, when she attended UIS, uh, bought her books online and then sold them back online. So her books ended up only costing about $30 a semester per book. So she saved a ton of money doing that. So once you're on campus, you're going to find out about all these great online sites that buy your books back. Utilize it. But you're going to have the chance to rent. You're going to have the chance to buy used. Take advantage of those kind of things. Do we have any other questions? Can we still apply for any UIS freshman scholarships? Are there any more scholarships available? A lot of the scholarships on campus are starting to, to dry up. You know, a lot of the students that we've been working with all year have been working with that. Now, sometimes there are late scholarships that open up. Contact your admissions counselor, and like I said, my information will be up on the screen here in a little bit. You can always email me, and I can let you know if I think there are some outside scholarships or some extra scholarships available to you, but the scholarship application process is closed. Now, once you're a student at UIS, you're going to have the chance to apply for scholarships every single year. Take advantage of it. A lot of our scholarships are geared towards continuing students. A lot of our faculty members love to give scholarships to the students they really like. <clears throat> Sit in the front rows, they'll like it better. Then you might get some more scholarship money as you go through. All right, so take advantage of that stuff. If you're in the honors program, honors actually increases your scholarship $500 a semester up to two semesters, so up to $1,000 if you're keeping a 4.0 GPA. So that is another way to take advantage of some of that stuff on campus as well. But like I said, most of the scholarships are, are, are taken, but sometimes there are late ones available. So feel free to email the counselors if you want. Uh, but like I said, it's going to be tough to find some scholarships at this point. If our GPA, another great question, if our GPA is good freshman year, can the academic scholarships increase? That's only through the honors program that that happens. But if your, if your grade point average is dropped, Sometimes you can lose scholarship money. Now, number one to know, we do not take scholarship money from you at the end of first semester at UIS. We give you that year, you're allowed to do those kind of things, and we're going to be willing to be there to help you out. Nobody wants to see you lose scholarship money. All right? But sometimes you can buy the scholarship application, get money later on, but that's going to be later on in the next year's scholarship application process, unless you're with the honors program. Great question. Is the bus service free? That's a great question, and that is something that, that is currently being worked out. Uh, last month, I heard that the uh, city transportation and the university have worked out an agreement with the ICAR to allow free transportation. I have not seen it officially in writing yet, so that's hopefully something that will, that will come out and, and be there for you as a freshman. Uh, like I said, a lot of students utilize their roommates, utilize their friends to get around, but the bus service is something that, that we're working on to get free for a lot of students here at UIS. Is Austin a great guy? What? Austin, it's great to see you, man. Uh, hey, I look forward to seeing you here in the fall. Great question. Hopefully you were one of the first two to write something down so I can get you a prize there. Let me see, I got another question coming up. Great question. Is an appointment necessary for assessment testing at UIS, or does the university already know who needs to take the test? What, what assessment testing, and, and what I meant by that is placement tests. Uh, based on your subscores on your ACT, and based on your major that you're going into at UIS, you might be selected to take a placement exam to get in the courses you need. Yes, we know who needs to take those placement exams. But what I would recommend doing is contacting our undergraduate advising office who handles the placement exams here on campus and let them know what exams you're taking and how you're going to do it. Because you also can take some of those at some of the community colleges around Illinois and we have a list of those that, that are acceptable. The phone number for our undergraduate advising office is 217-206-7475. And let me say that one more time. It's 217-206-7471.
and they can then uh, let you know. Typically, placement exams, from what I've seen, start at about 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but there are some students that need to take one. There are some students that need to take two. So contacting them uh, would be a good thing. And also, those take place on day one of orientation. If you're coming to the one-day orientation on July 11th, you cannot take your placement exams here. You have to take those at a community college or uh, elsewhere. Let me see. What is the, another great question, what is the population of UIS freshmen and the overall population? In terms of freshmen at UIS, we're looking at about an incoming class of between 325 and 350 freshmen for our total undergraduate population. And those are students like yourself that are going to be going for a bachelor's degree, about 3,200 for graduate students and undergrad students. And graduate students typically are working towards a master's degree, and that's an advanced degree after your bachelor's. And there's about 2,000 of those students on campus. So we've got about 5,200 in terms of total enrollment on campus. The greatest part about that is with 350 freshmen, you're going to get to build great relationships with a lot of your classmates. And you probably heard some of that from some of the orientation leaders. But at a lot of schools with that, you see the same people in every single one of your classes. You're with them all the time. Here at UIS with over 3,000 undergrads, you're going to see a lot of different things in the classroom. You're going to be able to experience a lot of different things in the classroom because you're going to have transfers. You're going to be able to keep that close base but with all these new information, new thought processes. And I think that's one of the things that makes Illinois Springfield as special as it is. You get the small feel, but a class feel of a lot of new ideas that typically only comes from a little bit larger universities. Great question. Well, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to come out and, and uh, you know, take part in this. I hope to see a lot of you here in the fall. Let me know when you're at orientation how it went. Here's one thing that I'll do for you. Because orientation, it's pressure -free. During orientation, you will sign up for classes, all right? We want to get you in the classes you want to take. Freshman year, important. One of the questions earlier is, how do I keep that GPA high so I can open up more scholarships? We want you to keep those grades up. If you get enrolled in a class and you go home and you're not sure about it, email me, and I will help you find a class that's a better fit for you as a freshman so we can make sure that you're getting what you need as well as taking classes that are most interesting to you. Because I know sometimes during that pressure-filled day when you're filling out what classes you want with our advisor, it can get tough. So I'm here for you. This is my cell number on the screen as well. Text me, call me. It's not a big deal. I'd be glad to help you. And thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you on campus and becoming a prairie star next year.